In this video, I will walk you through free response question number three from the 2000 AP Calculus exam. This problem is primarily about finding the relative or absolute max or min given the graph of the derivative. Problem number three. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of function f, for the interval from negative seven to positive seven. The graph of f prime has horizontal tangent lines at x equals negative three, x equals two, and x equals five, and a vertical tangent at x equals three. Part A, find all values of x between negative seven and positive seven at which f attains a relative minimum. Justify your answer. Here are some notes that you will need to solve this problem. This is not something that you would need to write as part of your solution on the AP exam. A relative minimum can only occur at a critical value where f prime is equal to zero or f prime is undefined. We are looking at the graph of f prime, so it will be easy to see where f prime is equal to zero. It's equal to zero here at x equals negative five and here at x equals negative one and here at x equals five. Here are some more notes that you need to know. According to the first derivative test, f of x will have a relative max at critical value x equals c if f prime goes from positive to negative. This makes sense because if the derivative is positive, that means the original function is increasing. And if the derivative is negative, it means f of x is decreasing. So it makes sense that we would have a relative max at the top of this hill. Similarly, f of x will have a relative min at x equals c if f prime changes from negative to positive. Again, this makes sense because if the first derivative is negative, it means the original function is decreasing in that interval. And if the derivative is positive, the function f of x is increasing. So it makes sense that we, we would have a relative min at the bottom of this little valley. Take a look at critical value negative five. Notice that f prime is above the x-axis to the left and below the x-axis to the right. So f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals negative five. According to the first derivative test, that means we have a relative max at x equals negative five. And uh, one more time, that's because the original function is increasing when the derivative is positive and decreasing when it is negative. Thus, relative max is here. Take a look at the critical number negative one. Notice that f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals negative one. That means we have a relative min at x equals negative one according to the first derivative test. And then looking at the critical value of five, the derivative goes from positive to positive. That means we have neither a relative max nor a relative min at x equals five. It's probably a point of inflection like this. So here comes the summary statement with justification. F of x has a relative min at x equals negative one because f prime changes from negative to positive. And that is your first derivative test. Part B, find all values of x between negative seven and positive seven at which f attains a relative maximum. Justify your answer. Well, we already figured this out as we worked on part A. We know there is a relative max at x equals negative five because f prime goes from positive to negative. And again, that is the first derivative test. f of x has a relative max at x equals negative five because f prime changes from positive to negative. Part C, find all values of x between negative seven and positive seven at which f double prime 
is negative. A long time ago, we learned the graphical relationships between f, f prime, and f double prime. So we know that f double prime will be negative when f prime is decreasing. Notice that f prime is decreasing in the blue intervals and increasing in the yellow intervals. So that means that f double prime is going to be negative in these intervals and positive in these intervals. We are being asked where f double prime is less than zero. So that'll be from negative seven to negative three and from two to five. Wait a minute, not so fast with that interval from two to five. You see, we have a vertical tangent line at x equals three. That means the derivative of this graph will be undefined right here. And f double prime is the derivative of f prime. So f double prime will not be defined at x equals three. So when we report our intervals, we will have to split this one up and say uh, from two to three and from three to five. So f double prime is negative for the intervals negative seven to negative three, two to three, and three to five, because f prime is decreasing and f double prime is defined. Notice I had to add in this last little statement to explain why we are leaving out the value of x equals three. Part D is not so straightforward, so bear with me. At what value of x on the closed interval from negative seven to positive seven does f attain its absolute maximum? Justify your answer. Don't forget that in part b, we found that f of x has its only relative maximum at x equals negative five. Since this is the only relative maximum, the only other candidates for absolute maximum are the endpoints, negative seven and positive seven. Here is the key concept that we will need in order to solve this part of the problem. The area under f prime is the change in f of x. So what do I mean by that? This yellow area is the area under the curve between negative seven and negative five. This area indicates the net change of the original function f of x from negative seven to negative five. An area that is above the x-axis represents a positive change in f of x. In other words, f of x is increasing between negative seven and negative five. That tells us that uh, the value of the function at negative five is going to be greater than the value of the function at negative seven. Think about it. Um, let's imagine that this dot represents the value of the original function at negative seven. And then we have this positive change in f of x, represented by this positive area. So if there's a positive change, that means that uh, f of x will increase from negative seven to negative five. So that means that the value of the function at negative five is going to be greater than the value of the function at negative seven. So we can rule out negative seven as a candidate. There's no way to say this really succinctly. So let's just write up what we have so far. The candidates for the x value of the absolute maximum are x equals negative seven, x equals negative five, and x equals seven. F of negative five is greater than f of negative seven because f of x is increasing from negative seven to negative five, as shown by the positive area under the f prime curve. So now we are down to the last two candidates for the location of the absolute maximum, negative five and positive seven. We have to figure out if f of x is greater at negative five or will it be greater at seven? Let's again analyze the area under the curve of f prime. 
When I say the area under the curve, I really mean the area between the curve and the x-axis. So this blue area under the curve represents the change in f between negative 5 and negative 1. Because this is below the x-axis, this is a negative change in the value of function f. So imagine that this point right here represents the value of the function at negative 5. By the time we get to negative 1, the value of the function will have decreased because that's what a negative area under the curve tells us. So f at negative 1 is going to be less than f at negative 5. What happens between negative 1 and positive 7? First, let's consider what happens to the value of the function from negative 1 to 5. We have this positive area under the curve. So that means that f of x will be increasing from negative 1 to 5. So we know that f at 5 will be greater than f at negative 1. But do we really know that f at 5 will be greater than f at negative 5 the way I have it drawn? Actually, we do. You see, this negative area under the curve tells us how much f of x decreases from negative 5 to negative 1. The positive area under the curve tells us how much f of x increases from negative 1 to 5. Because the magnitude of the negative area is smaller than the magnitude of the positive area, we have a net increase in f of x from negative 5 to positive 5. From 5 to 7, there is another positive area under the f prime curve. That tells us that f of x will continue to increase from 5 to 7. So f at 7 will be greater than f at 5 and f at negative 5. Picking up here at the purple part, f at 7 is greater than f at negative 5 because f of x has a net increase from negative 5 to 7 as shown by the net positive area under the f prime curve. Therefore, f of x has an absolute max at x equals 7.